Side missions are intended to provide variety for players who want to take a break from the mainline quest and to reward those who go the extra mile. This take on side content can have grave consequences however when something unexpectedly hits you with a depth of character or a plot twist that not even the main story can pull off. Despite being optional, these kinds of quests can take the player for a spin and make you feel really guilty for treating them so lightly. If you want a clean conscience, avoid these optional quests at all costs, because I'm Cy for WhatCulture.com and these are 10 video game side missions that made you feel guilty. Number 10, Viola's Daughter, Bloodborne. The world of Bloodborne isn't necessarily the happiest place to begin with. The average Yharnam citizen has to deal with plagues, werewolves and eldritch gods on a regular basis, but as it turns out, the most deplorable monster in the game is actually you. In Yharnam, the hunter can stumble upon a sad girl hiding inside her house. The girl will tell the player that her parents have gone missing and that she wants to find out what happened to them. After defeating Father Gascoigne, the werewolf hunter residing in the Yharnam graveyard, the player can loot the body of Viola, the girl's mother, and obtain a red ribbon. When you return the ribbon to the girl, she becomes really distraught and loses faith in the safety of her house. The hunter can then direct her to Yosefka's clinic for shelter. Sometime later, the hunter will come across a giant pig which will drop the girl's red ribbon once killed. It turns out not only did you cause the girl to have a mental breakdown, you also gave her a very grave fate. Number 9, Gargoyle Removal Service, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. In a game about blood-sucking monsters like Vampire the Masquerade, you really shouldn't expect any mission to make you out to be the hero. However, one mission is specifically designed to show just how terrible your character can be. Upon reaching the Hollywood area, the player can get a quest that tasks them to deal with a gargoyle hiding in an abandoned theatre. The player has two ways of doing this. They can either kill the gargoyle or convince him to join forces with the Baron of Hollywood who fights against his former master Maximilian Strauss. Here is where things take a turn for the worse. If you are a member of Clan Tremont, which Strauss is the regent of, you can inform Strauss of the gargoyle's existence. He will instruct you to kill the monster so that you can prove your loyalty to your clan and be rewarded with a unique apartment. The apartment is one of the best in the game, but in order to get it, you have to stab the escaped slave in the back and take away his freedom forever. Your fancy new loft will be a constant reminder of your sins. Number 8. Lost to the Curse – Dragon Age Origins The gritty storyline of Dragon Age Origins has plenty of moments where the morals of the Grey Warden are tested and they have to deal with some pretty heavy consequences for their actions. Well, except for one side mission which will make you feel bad regardless of what you do. Lost to the Curse is a quest in which the Grey Warden has to find the missing wife of a Dalish hunter named Denyla. Upon finding Denyla, it will turn out that the woman has been turned into a werewolf and doesn't want to come back in fear of hurting her husband. Denyla will ask the Warden to kill her and lie to her husband about her fate. The player has the option to refuse and tell Denyla to come back, but this will only provoke her and cause her to attack the Warden, forcing them to kill her anyway. Nothing you do can spare Denyla's life or soothe her husband's grief, but the worst part is at the end of the Dalish storyline you can actually cure all all the werewolves, which means that Denyla might have come back to her husband anyway if you just hadn't picked up the quest in the first place. Number 7. Help Granny Rags Kill Slackjaw In the world of Dishonored, good and innocent people are rare, and Slackjaw, the boss of the Bottle Street Gang, is certainly not one of them. Early on in the game, Corvo can come across an old witch by the name of Granny Rags. She asks Corvo to get rid of the Bottle Street gangsters who have been harassing her for quite a while. After taking out the criminals, Granny will ask you for one more tiny favour, poisoning the supply of the gangsters' bootleg cure for the plague. This starts a long feud between Granny Rags and Slackjaw, which, if you see it through, will end with Slackjaw getting kidnapped by Granny Rags who then tries to eat him and uses bones in a ritual. You could say Slackjaw deserves this, but according to the game's tie-in novels, his character undergoes severe changes after the events of the game. He starts a legitimate business and becomes Corvo's ally, so turning him into a stew instead is all the more cruel. Number 6. Rise Forsaken – World of Warcraft Both the Horde and the Alliance have their fair share of morally questionable missions, but Rise Forsaken has to take the cake as the one that will truly have you asking, are we the baddies? The quest is given to you by Sylvanas Windrunner, the Banshee Queen of the Forsaken, who orders your character to kill a group of human refugees hiding on an island and then resurrect their bodies so that they can become part of a Forsaken army. If this already doesn't sound like the most twisted scheme ever, the refugees you fight will try to run away from you and get progressively more desperate about trying to preserve their lives. The mission ends with the refugees drinking worgen blood and becoming cursed just so that they can be spared turning into the undead. To add more guilt to your actions here, the process of killing and raising Raising innocent refugees is exactly what the Lich King used to do and what Sylvanas and her Forsaken are supposedly against. This means you aren't just a monster for completing this quest, you're a hypocrite. Number 5. Javik's Memory Shard – Mass Effect 3 
Mass Effect has a lot of optional conversations with your crewmates. Most of the time they are somewhat self-contained and will simply reflect on your relationship with the person in question. However, one of the conversations you can have with Javik can make you feel really bad for starting it in the first place. During Priority Earth, the player can speak with Javik who will tell them about the Echo Shard, an ancient artifact in his possession that contains the memories of millions of Protheans. Shepard can ask Javik why he doesn't want to use the shard to remember the people he has lost, to which Javik will respond by saying that forgetting their faces helped him deal with the trauma and pain. Still, the player can choose to encourage Javik to touch the shard and relive all of his species' most painful memories. Doing so will make Javik overcome with grief, and when the war with the Reapers is won, Javik will say that he wants to end his life to join his people. The worst part is that if you just drop the subject altogether, Javik can instead stay happy and even co-write a book about his species with Liara. Number 4. The Kid Kidnapper Fallout 3 the Kidnapper is an unmarked side mission in Fallout 3 that you can initiate by talking to the leader of the Paradise Falls Slavers, Eulogy Jones. Jones will ask your character to retrieve some young bodies for his operation and will suggest kidnapping a child from a local settlement called Little Lamplight, which is run entirely by children. The premise is already disturbing, but in order to make you feel like a complete jerk for helping out the slavers, the game makes your character pick out the youngest and most innocent resident of Little Lamplight as their victim. Young Bumble is only six years old and quite incapable of surviving on her own, but the player can convince her to leave Little Lamplight so you can both go on a fun adventure together, but after leading her out of the cave, Bumble will be introduced to one of the slavers, who will trick her into putting on a slave collar and coming with them. Your reward for selling Bumble to a loving family is an aptly named helmet called the Boogeyman's Hood, a rather measly prize for giving yourself a one-way ticket to hell. Number 3. Altruist Cult Grand Theft Auto 5 The fans of GTA 5 have been divided about Trevor's character since the original release of the game. Some love to play as an unhinged psychopath, whilst others feel uncomfortable getting into his particularly brain-stained shoes. One of Trevor's side activities in the game makes the complaints of the latter side completely understandable. After the mission Nervous Ron, Trevor receives a message from Ron which informs him that the altruist cult is requesting some young blood for their organisation. From that point on, Trevor can donate random hitchhikers and strangers to the cult for a hefty prize of $1,000. It is heavily implied that the cult consists of cannibals. The screams of Trevor's victims as they are hauled away seem to confirm that whatever is happening behind the gates of their camp, it's not good. Delivering the hitchhikers is optional, however, if the player wants Trevor to kill all of the cultists, they have to deliver at least four victims. This will trigger a special event in which the cultists decide to take Trevor into their camp at gunpoint, which forces Trevor to massacre their community. Both he and you are punished for a total lack of morals. Number 2. The Taste of Death The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Skyrim, just like other Elder Scrolls games, gives the player plenty of opportunities to act like the villain of the story. You can join the Dark Brotherhood and assassinate innocent people, or join forces with the devilish Daedric Princes. The mission for the Daedric Prince Namira has to be one of the more disturbing as it requires you to trick a completely innocent priest of Arche into becoming a meal for Namira's cult of cannibals. The mission starts in Markarth where Brother Varulus, the soon-to-be dinner of the cultists, asks the Dragonborn to investigate the reasons behind the mysterious bite marks left on the corpses in the Hall of the Dead. While exploring the hall, the player meets a woman named Eola who will tell them about Namira's cult in Skyrim and then ask them to bring Varulus to one of their cannibal feasts in exchange for a reward. Players who decide to join the cult will have to watch as the poor and kind-hearted Varulus is brainwashed and put on a sacrificial altar. The Dragonborn must then kill Varulus and consume his flesh. Talk about a bitter pill to swallow. Number 1. Birth of the Conservation Movement Red Dead Redemption – Undead Nightmare if someone were to tell you that a game about cowboys could make you feel sorry for a mythical creature, then you'd assume they were crazy. However, those who have played Red Dead Redemption's strange DLC, Undead Nightmare, know well just how heartbreaking the tears of a Bigfoot can be. Birth of the Conservation Movement is a mission in which John Marston is asked to kill a family of Sasquatches who, according to an old hunter, have been terrorising the area and eating people's babies. John sets out into the forest and kills every ape-like cryptid in sight until only one remains. But for some reason, this one isn't fleeing it is quietly sobbing underneath a tree. Marston approaches the creature and accuses him of eating babies, but Bigfoot denies it, saying that his diet consists of berries. He then breaks down into tears and begs for John to shoot him, as he's the last surviving member of his species and the thought of being alone is unbearable. Bigfoot's cries combined with the music in the scene and John's until now mindless killing make this one of the most soul-crushing scenes in video game history. You 
absolute fiend, you. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below, which of these side missions made you feel the worst, and of course let us know of any others that we didn't include. Make sure you click that like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe and hit that notification bell. I've been Cypher Culture, and have a good week.